are live. All right, so good morning, everybody. Uh, excited to be here. Thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for the pleasure of your time. Um, I truly value this opportunity to pour into you and to be a part of this coaching community, Survive to Thrive. We are going to continue to dive deep into the organization model of a millionaire real estate agent. We're going to slow down in order to speed up. Now, what I mean by that is we're going to look at that first hire and we're going to talk about how we make sure that we hire the right person. We're going to look at a disc profile. We're going to look at the KPA and we're actually going to use live examples to demonstrate what the disc profile of an administrative assistant looks like and what the KPA of the right person for an administrative assistant looks like. And of course, I'm multitasking, so if I stop, it's because I'm looking to make sure that I admit everybody in because Zoom is, is uh, fascinating. <laughs> all right, all right, so here we go. You do all you could do. Reading from my notes. You do all you could do. You go as far as you can go. And when you can't go any further, you look for help. And Gary Keller wrote The Millionaire Real Estate Agent in 2002. And he also shared to lead with revenue. And in other words, make money before you spend money. And I'm just going to change. I'm going to tweak this statement just a little bit. I'm going to start looking for administrative help as soon as possible. I'm not sure I'm going to wait until I've maxed out on what I can do in order to hire that first hire because I'm looking for leverage day one, if possible. And I am going to find a way to bring leverage into my life as early as possible. And it's not because I want to work less. It's because when you create leverage in your business, it's an investment. It's not a cost. And what that means is leverage is going to give you an opportunity to go from one closing every 90 days to one closing every month. And when you look at it like that, it's an investment. It's not a cost. It's an investment that you should make as soon as possible. You still want to make sure that you hire the right person, though. All right. So we have three key areas of your organizational model. Number one hire administrative help. The very first person you're gonna hire is admin. Besides people leverage, you could also turn to systems or tools. Now, let me read to you what Gary has to say on page 159 on this subject. Besides people leverage, you could also turn to systems and tools. However, while traditional thinking would have you put systems in place to push you further along, we've discovered, <clears throat> and whenever Gary says we've discovered, he has, a, he has a, a research team of hundreds of people that are interviewing successful real estate agents in order to learn the best practices of the top real estate agents in our country. Now, while traditional thinking would have you put systems in place to push your, you further along, we've discovered a problem with that thinking. Designing and implementing system, systems takes more time than you think and very specific skills. For most real estate agents, Trying to put multiple systems in place by yourself will actually reduce productivity. Besides, when we get into the disc profile here in just a minute, you'll see what I'm talking about. If you're a high D, which a lot of you are, systems are not your thing. You're the wrong person to be doing that job. Creating effective systems can be as complicated as it is time consuming and many agents quickly become frustrated. Frustration then leads to poor systems or no systems at all. One of the characteristics of a person who is a high D is a lack of patience. Guilty. 
Have you ever walked into a Starbucks and turned around because there were 20 people standing in line? I have. Mm -hmm. I'm not standing in that line. Are you kidding me? No way. That's a lack of patience. Yeah, we're gonna get, Lucas, we're gonna get into the disc profile here in just a second. So I promise I'm gonna answer that question. The best way to put systems in place is to hire a person with the skills to document and later implement your systems. Now, what does talent look like? Well, on page 161, Gary shares exactly what talent looks like and what I would do if I had a team, if I, would have, if I was a rainmaker, I would print the copy of this page and I would look at every single person on my team and I would say, are they talent? And I would ask that question based on this description. First of all, always strive for talent. We say someone is talent when she is a superb match for the criteria we have established for a particular position. That means you could be talent in one role and not talent in another. <clears throat> By John, this week, 161. I'm on 161. Yes. By this, we mean her natural ability, skills, experience, and aspirations all line up around the job description and give them every reason to succeed at a very high level. This allows you to judge people against clear criteria instead of judging them as people. A candidate is therefore either a great fit or not a fit for the job rather than being a good or bad person and in absence of systems in absence of a system for hiring the right people we tend to hire people that we'd like we tend to hire people based on judging them as people <clears throat> and i really like alex kublikas for example i mean he's a good guy and if I were interviewing Alex to be a member of my team, I'm gonna hire him just based on the fact that he's a good guy and I like him. Now, if I'm hiring a buyer's agent, Alan, Alex could be an absolute mismatch for that role. And even though I like him, I'm hiring him and I'm putting him into a role where he's gonna fail. He's gonna fail because he's not a match for the role. Not because he's not a good person, because he's still a good person. Is this making sense? Say yes. 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 Okay, so here's how Gary defines talent. Talent pushes to get answers. Non-talent will have to be pushed to want answers. Talent shares your goals and fulfills your needs as a natural byproduct of fulfilling their own goals. Non-talent doesn't fulfill your needs and it ends up giving you back pieces of the job. So if you've ever had somebody that was a part of your organization and they gave you back pieces of the job, <clears throat> it's non-talent. It doesn't mean they're a bad person and it doesn't mean they don't have talent because we're all talented at something. It just means they're not talent for that role. Talent knows what it wants or it is actively searching to know. Non-talent doesn't know what it wants and isn't searching. Talent pushes you constantly. Non-talent requires you to push them. Talent is continually raising the bar and wants to be associated with talent. Non-talent may not know where the existing bar is set or even what bar we're talking about. <laughs> where is the bar? What bar? <laughs> talent is pushing the bar. Non-talent doesn't care if there is a bar. Mm -hmm. Lastly, you can recognize talent by the way they talk. Their language is the language of challenge 
and achievement. I love this part. Listen closely. When you work with them, talent is about as inconspicuous as a mighty redwood in a field of Christmas trees. Talent stands out. Now be really careful about labeling somebody as talent too soon. We meet with somebody, we interview them, and we say, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I just met with this person and their talent. And my response to that would be, how do you know? When you, and the answer is, you don't. You think they're talent. They look like talent. They have the potential to be talent in that role, but time will tell. Okay, so... The next conversation that I want to have with you is how do we use the DISC and the KPA to identify a, a good fit in the lead administrative position? So I'm going to share my screen. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the DISC profile. Let me move this bar so I can see. And... <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I've got a lot of buttons open, I know. All right, this is my disk profile. And I'm a high I, high D. What does that mean? Well, let's go to another screen. The D is assertive, results-focused, rapid decisions, will seek challenges, can be aggressive and impatient and desires to lead. My D is 98 out of 100. And my I is 99 out of 100. An I is influence, very outgoing and persuasive, very people oriented, quite optimistic outlook strong communication skills, likes to have variety in their day. S, steadiness, very patient, favors stability and structure, not a risk taker, likes to operate at a steady, even pace. C, they're compliant. They like structure, date, fact, and analysis based. I love whoever's drawing on this. That's cool. Just don't draw any funny pictures. <laughs> Precise and accurate trust in the value of structure, standards, and order sees the value of rules. So if I didn't tell you anything else other than put this in front of you, knowing what you know about the organization model of a millionaire real estate agent, we're looking for that first hire. We're looking for an administrative assistant who has capacity, talent, the ability to grow to become the executive leader of our team. What are the dominant personality traits that we're looking for on a DISC profile for that individual? Looking for a high C, S &C. first of all. High C? Mm -hmm. S and C. Yes, yeah, S and C for sure. Yeah, an SC. An SC, 100%. So the very first thing I'm going to do if I'm interviewing someone for that role is I'm going to have them complete a DISC profile. And I wouldn't interview me for an administrative assistant. I would be a horrible administrative assistant. Not, not only would I be horrible at the job, I would hate the job. I would go home at the end of the day exhausted and unhappy, and I would burn out. When you hire people for the wrong role, you are setting them up for failure. And I'm a note taker, guys, so I would just tell you that's a note that you should write. And, and the way you should write it is when I hire people and I place them in the wrong role. I place them in a role that they are not fit for. They are the wrong fit. I am setting them up for failure. 
Got a question for you. Yep. How do you know what traits you need for a particular job? Are you basically going off of your instincts for it, or do you know that a it needs to be a compliant blah, 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 person? How Love that it? question. Love that question. And I'm going to find the answer for you. I'm going to go to kwopportunity.com. That is the website for the South Florida region. And I am going to find out when the next career visioning class is being offered. And I am going to a, your CV, segment number four, November 5th. There's actually one today, guys. Uh, CV segment number three, life story and motivational interview. It's today from 1.30 to three o'clock. And Alex, I'm going to take career visioning every single time I have the opportunity to take the class. This is where I'm going to learn how to identify the right person for the right role. It's kwopportunity.com. Now, if I go back to the previous screen, if I'm hiring a listing specialist, if I'm hiring somebody who is going to be my lead listing specialist, what are the dominant characteristics that I'm looking for in a lead listing specialist? D-S. D-I. 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 I want a D because a D doesn't, doesn't really care about rejection. D is like, Next. An SC is gonna is not going to look at rejection the same way. It doesn't mean that an SC cannot be a successful listing agent because they absolutely can. So don't hear me saying something I didn't say. What I'm saying is the dominant characteristic traits I'm looking for is DI. Yeah. A buyer agent, I want someone who leads with their eye. Very outgoing and persuasive, very people oriented, optimistic outlook, strong communication skills, likes to have variety in their day. It's a buyer's agent. Mm -hmm. Yep. Guys, is this making sense? Yes, it is. Okay, good. Now let's go to a KPA. Hey, John, I, yep. I missed what, what is the second trait for a buyer's agent? So it's an I and a... I, I want somebody who's a D. I just wanted to turn it around. I want an ID versus a DI. My listing specialist, I want somebody who leads with their D followed by the I. Got it. And for a buyer's agent, I want somebody who is a high I and leads by, and follows with a D. When we first started with Recruit Select, which was what we taught before career visioning, we talked about the tent profile. If you drew it out, it looks like a tent. And the tent profile is a perfect administrative assistant, meaning the D is low, the I is a little bit higher. They lead with their S followed by a C. It's a tent, perfect profile of an administrative assistant. Are we good? Okay, let's move on to the KPA. So this is an actual job match that we're looking at for a buyer's agent. And is this person a good fit for the buyer's agent? Pretty much. Well, what is the what does the job match rating say? High. They're a very high match. Very for the, high. Very high match for a buyer's agent. Absolutely. Now Let's just look at one characteristic here and assertiveness. Intensity. Is that necessarily something we're looking for in an administrative assistant? Do I want an administrative assistant who, who's super high with intensity? Not no. necessarily, no. not no. necessarily, because I'm gonna get a lot of, that's not the right way to do it. I think my way is better. Well, I'm sorry, I'm hiring you. So I need you to be really, really high on structure. I need you to be really, really high on- Adaptability. Thank you. 
A hundred percent. Yeah. Now here's where the real value in this comes. Let's go down to the actual review on, and this is part of the validation process is we're gonna look at the descriptive review and we're gonna say, okay, let's talk about adaptability. Here's what the adaptability has to say about you, Adam. The adaptability job target is medium. People with medium adaptability and generally concerned about others' feelings and thoughts and they take these into account when dealing, account when deciding what to say. Considerations with this is he might be too focused at times on the other party's experience and not focused enough on his own goals and parameters of performance. Now, skipping ahead. All right, so job considerations on responsiveness. Adam exhibits a positive level of natural responsiveness and enjoys change-oriented environments requiring him to manage a range of responsibilities, being an assertive initiative taker. He seeks the authority to act swiftly and decisively on his ideas. On assertiveness, Adam is an assertive and decisive decisive person who is naturally motivated to take charge and push for results. He enjoys being a person of authority. On logical problem solving, Adam enjoys using a linear logical approach to tackling bigger problems. He can slow down and think through larger issues methodically in a step-by-step -step manner. Now, I'm gonna take this off the screen for a second because we're running out of time. When you review a KPA with someone, when you're sitting down and going through the validation process with them, it's a process that's gonna take about three to five hours. We just spent 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes, five minutes taking a snapshot of the KPA. Not enough to make the right hire. This is a three to five hour process that you go through with the individual that you're interviewing. By the way, you're learning if they're a good fit for the role. What else is happening? They're, they're, learning. they're learning if they're a they're, good they're, fit for the role. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're self-discovering too. It's like to a red light, green light. Yeah, they're looking at that and going, oh my gosh. So I had an agent come to me and say, I'm thinking about being on a team. Cool, let's do a KPA. The KPA showed that she was a 98% match for an individual agent. Now, would that person be a good fit to be on somebody else's team? Nope. No. Without this tool, we would make a decision based on emotion and we would make the wrong decision. Oh, Natalie, your dog is so cute. What's, what's the dog's name? Big Daddy Kane. Big, oh, <laughs> look, on. Great. That is awesome. <laughs> Big Daddy, that is so cute. I will here, Natalie, wait a second. We gotta get you a cup from Flanagan. I, I want you. To, I want you to talk again, so you're on the speaker view, so I could take a picture of Big Daddy Kane. He got off. He got off the stool thing. Just Big come Daddy, back. come back! <laughs> <laughs> Where's Big Daddy? Come on! Oh my gosh, pick him up. That is. Who's like your daddy? Who's <laughs> daddy? He's a hundred pounds. I can't pick him up. <laughs> All right, guys, talk to me. Talk to me. Ask questions. Give me your ahas. How did there we you do go. today? Did you get hey, value? Hey, John, I can give you a little feedback on the disc profile and the KPA. Thank um, you, Mindy. I. Oh, she was going to say something great and she froze. Oh, a oh big that, was, that was, that was going to be brilliant. Mindy, when you get your signal back, please jump in here and talk to me again. I have no respect for anybody. Um, okay. Okay. All right. So I Mindy. think I'm back. Yep, I think I'm back. 
Um, so I always, I've been primarily a buyer's agent until I did the KPA and it said I should either be um, an OP or a listing agent. So I flipped my business in six months and 80% of my business is now listings. Wow. You know, I love that. Mindy, a quick question. Are yeah. you having more, are you having more fun? Um, I wouldn't say I'm having more fun. Okay. Uh, for the most part, I'm getting frustrated less. Okay. There you go. We're saying the same thing. You're just saying it different. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is frustration fun? Uh, no. Then are you having more fun? I suppose you could say yes. I, I feel like I'm working longer hours, though, because I have more business. Okay. Well, then what's the next conversation? Oh, I, I've been trying to get a hold of this one person who I think is going to be a perfect fit to be the executive admin for me. And uh, we're actually getting together Friday. Got it. Okay. Okay. The only advice I would give you is get at least two or three other people to do the KPA. Don't just interview one person. And a couple of people are asking, how do, how do we do the KPA? Your director of agent services and your market center or your market center administrator will order the KPA uh, for you. You simply reach out to them and ask them to send you the KPA link. Or if you have somebody that you want to interview, if I'm interviewing Alex, for example, I would ask Justin to send him the link for lead buyer agent. And that's going to tell me how Alex um, shows up as a fit for that role. The KPA will not only tell you what their behavioral style is, it will not only tell you who they are based on those 11 metrics, it will tell you where they are as far as being a fit for that particular role. And if you want to know, how does Keller Williams know this? It's a good question, by the way, if you're not asking it, or if you are asking it, it's a good question. The way they know is they look at the top 20% and all of Keller Williams, individuals who are performing at a high role in the administrative assistant position. And they look to see what are their characteristics on those 11 metrics. How do they show up? And then it's going to score the individual that's doing the KPA against the top 20% in our company. And it's gonna say, well, the top 20% show up here and you showed up here. John, we'll yeah. also gonna tell you what other um, avenues are open to you as well, besides you know, being a listing agent, maybe you wanna look at these items as well. And then additionally, the other thing is, as far as a disc is concerned with Tony Robbins, you're able to go ahead and get a disc done free if you go onto the Tony Robbins website, correct? That's yeah. how I did mine. Yeah. Yeah. I've done the disc many, many times and I did it again this morning just because I wanted to see if it would be similar to the last one I did. And it was exactly the same. It hasn't changed. Not in 18 years. I'm the same person today that I was 18 years ago. As far as the, the disc is concerned. Yeah. I'm sorry. The disc is, it helps you in, in your personal life too. I dissed my boyfriend before I even started dating him because oh, I, married, 100%. I married a D and I would, the wrong thing I could have ever done in my life because I'm a high D. So, well, it's not only that, oh my gosh, we could stay here and talk about this for hours. I gave a copy of mine to Monica and I said, here, read this. And she goes, now I understand. Now I understand <laughs> why you are the way you are. You're not a jerk. You're just a high D. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Good thing she didn't say you don't have a big D. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. It's great when you're actually going on presentations and who the who you're talking to because it's about the it's about the golden rule versus the platinum rule and the conversations that you're having and who you're speaking to. So the disc, I mean, the KPA is great when you're hiring talent, but the disc is about the conversations that you're having. And are you talking, you know, in their listening style or your listening style? Yeah, good stuff. So the golden rule says treat others as you would treat yourself. The platinum rule, in other words, treat others the way you want to be treated. The platinum rule is treat others the way they want to be treated. Absolutely. Yeah, good stuff, guys. All right. I hope you guys got a lot out of this today. Uh, it's our last call for the week. 
Uh, I appreciate all of you. Just as a reminder, we are not here tomorrow. Uh, I have, uh, give me a second. Um, I have appointments <laughs> and tests with uh, doctors, surgeons, and other people that I don't want to mention in the next couple of days. And uh, stay tuned. As far as I know, we will be back Monday morning at 8 a.m. If that changes, I will let you know. But as of right now, we're back Monday morning at 8 a.m. ready to rock. And I'm so proud of every single one of you. Good luck with Great. everything. John. Thank you. I'm grateful to be a part of this journey with every single one of you. Remember that we are on a journey with a destination that is assured. And when you're on a journey with a destination that is assured, you know that success is the only option, that failure doesn't exist for the person who is on a journey with a destination that is assured. When you are on that path, there are no U-turns. There are no exits. Now you can change direction if you discover the GPS is telling you that you're off track, you can change direction, but that doesn't change the destination. The destination is the destination. And we're not gonna close how we close every single other call today, this is my close. And I'm doing this for, for a specific reason I'm talking to myself. You guys just have the opportunity to listen to my self-talk. I am on a journey with a destination that is assured. That will never stop. Make it a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Thank John. you John, so much. Thanks, John. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye, John. And my prayers are with you for tomorrow. Thank you. Mine too. Thank you. Thank you, John. Where's Thank you, John. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. All right, I am signing off and I'm gonna hit